Hey guys, welcome. Hello. So, so my name is Marina. I'm the founder of Creatively, and I'm joined here by my husband, Alex. Hello, everyone. He's the mysterious voice in the background. And tonight, I'm super excited to paint this holiday Hanukkah menorah. Um, it's called Eight Crazy Nights. And it's super colorful, really fun, and really gets you to be creative with all the colors. I love it. Love it too. So let's go through our supplies here. Alex, you ready? I was born ready. Let's do this. <laughs> so we have our 12 by 12 canvas. 12 by 12 canvas. We, Check. We have our... Palette paper facing shiny side up. Palette paper, shiny side up, check. Thank you. We have five colors of acrylic paint, white, phthalo blue, yellow, phthalo green, and red. Wow. So the red is actually shaped like a heart. I don't know if you can see it. Aw, isn't very... that sweet? Yes. So then we also have our step-by-step -step printed instructions. Lovely printed instructions, check. And then we have our sample piece so we can know what we're painting. Big need sample piece, check. And then we also have our cup with water. Cup with water, clearly labeled cup with water. Paint water. Not to be mistaken, check. <laughs> And then we have our paper towel. A little do-it-yourself item, paper towel. A little do-it-yourself item. And then two brushes, a small uh, round size 4 brush, and then a large size 16 flathead brush. You ready for this? You know what you didn't show? The easel. The easel. The easel. So first of all, guys, if you're not familiar with Creatively, we're a paint party in the box. So we send you everything you need to create a gorgeous painting from the comfort of your home. So all of the supplies that I just went over is actually included in your box. And the box itself is actually an easel. So it's super easy. It just folds back. And let me see if I could show this on the camera. So you just fold it the lid back and put one piece of tape here and another piece of tape here and you could put your canvas right in the middle here and that way you could see what you're painting um, and you could see it from a distance as well. Thank you Alex. I always forget that one. That's what I'm here for you know to, for the small details and you know we bring the fun. Appreciate it. Okay, so first, we're gonna start with the Creatively Pledge. So let's raise our paintbrush with our right hand and please repeat after me. Ahem, I'm ready. I promise. I promise. To have fun and relax. To have fun and relax. To not judge my painting. To not judge my painting. Or the painting of others. Or the painting of others and to be fearless and to be fearless you know you always do it the same way you know it's my favorite part <laughs> all right i think we're ready so i'm gonna take my paintbrush and i'm just gonna wet it and dry it on the paper towel a little bit and then we're gonna make a medium blue color so i'm just gonna take my phthalo blue and i'm gonna mix some white into it would you say it's mostly blue or mostly white in that mixture? It's like about half and half. It's a half I and half. I would say a half and half. I like it. So we're gonna start with the background. So I do want to tell you guys that you're welcome to use any color that you want. Just because we're painting the background blue doesn't mean your background should be blue. So definitely be creative as you want. Pick the colors that you want, and let's do this. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm gonna do a slightly diagonal line all the way across my canvas. Uh, so my menorah is gonna be a little bit tilted, just a little bit. 
And the line is about maybe two inches down from the top of my canvas. And then I'm gonna take the same color and I'm gonna do a large U shape all the way around and going pretty much to the edges of my canvas. And it doesn't need to be perfect because we could fix it later on. That looks like you drew it with a protractor. That was impressive. Are you serious? Absolutely. <laughs> I do have a hard time doing straight lines. So the fact that it's diagonal and a round shape definitely helps me. Works in your favor. Exactly. We all have our strengths. So then I'm just gonna find the center of my menorah and I'm just gonna draw a little X here. I think this is the center. Does this look centered? I think so. So this is just for me to know where the center is. So it's gonna be covered up, don't worry. Um, and then I'm gonna add four dots to kind of mark where my lights are gonna go. And we're gonna try to space them out pretty equally. But if they're not spaced out equally, also okay, because we could fix the shape later on with the paint. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. So it really doesn't need to be perfect. But mine is about maybe an inch or so apart, I would say. And then we're gonna create another U shape starting from the left dot all the way to the right dot. So keep in mind, this is a little bit, you kind of have to trick your brain a little bit to think of this as the background. So you're not drawing the menorah right now, you're doing the blue background and whatever is white is actually gonna be your menorah. So it's a little bit tricky at first, but you kind of have to set your minds that you're working on the background right now, if it's that makes like sense. Does that make you're sense? seeing the vase and not the two ladies' faces. Do you know what I mean? Yes, exactly. That was well, you were saying it. I was an like, interesting Whoa. analogy. I'll well, take it. Because when you were saying it, I definitely did not expect for you to say that the connection lines are not the menorah. So I'm like, oh, wow, it's the, you know, you're building in the background. So it's like I'm viewing the faces instead of the, the vase. I'll take it. I'll take it. So then we're going to do the same thing with a U shape. Going to the other dot. And my lines are pretty thick right now. And also, this is kind of a trick, but you could flip your canvas upside down if this is easier for you. And this way, it looks like a rainbow, so it's almost easier to, to draw it. So if it does help you, feel free to do that. So I'm gonna take this and do an upside down view. Like a horseshoe. Like a horseshoe, exactly. And then I'm gonna go here. But for some reason, I prefer the other way so you can play around and see what works best for you. And then I'm gonna do this one. And I'm just going to color the center part blue for now. And that way, if you notice, there's four white horseshoes or U shapes in between the blue. So that's going to be our menorah. Like little swings. Little swings? Or like, I don't know, jump rope swings, anything that kind of has to be connected on a flat top type of. Very interesting. Okay, you know what? I'll take that, it, I'll that, take that, it. That's the last time I offer my philosophizing input. <laughs> I'm going to use a little bit of water to go over these lines and make them thicker. And that way I could play around with the shape and kind of change it up a bit with my paint.
And again, it doesn't need to be perfect. And we could actually change up the shape even more um, in the next few steps. So don't worry about it. This one doesn't look perfect at all, especially when you look at it up close. Um, but just remember that this painting is more, I would say, abstract. Also, like some of the nicest Minoiras are, are like maybe handcrafted. So they inherently have some imperfections, imperfections and asymmetries. Exactly. But also, as long as you're suggesting the shape of the menorah, then your painting is going to come out really amazing. Um, and I think that's what makes it more beautiful, actually, especially for this style of painting that we're doing. It's really loose. It's very free. And we're just kind of... your spirit flow. Exactly. Okay, so then I'm going to paint in this background over here, which is also blue. So I'm defining more of this background. And with my brush strokes, I'm just following the shape of my menorah. So I'm kind of going in rounded motions. And just covering up this bottom part. Also, I'm super excited to do this painting just because I feel like there's not a lot of like Hanukkah art out there or like Hanukkah activities, you know? So it's just like, it's exciting for me to create this for like you. It. I'm just continuing to fill in the background and I'm going to use a little bit of water just to help spread the paint around a little bit. Is your brush very wet or not a ton of water? I usually don't use a ton of water, um, but sometimes if I'm covering a large area, then I wet my brush a little bit more because it helps spread the paint around. Got it. And I have these variations in the blue color a bit. Some of the strokes are a little bit lighter. Some of them are a little bit darker. And I think that's what makes it more beautiful so definitely feel free to vary it up a bit um, and play around and just have fun so i'm just filling in more of this blue background and you could Make the color a little bit darker on the edges if you want. And it already looks like a menorah. Sort of. Not yet. Not yet. You know, like, like the imprint or background of a menorah. Yeah. So now I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to rinse it. And then I'm going to do the center candle. So I'm just going to take some white and I'm going to draw a thick line in the middle. Going all the way down. Do you remember the name of the center candle? I was actually going to ask you that. Zero percent chance I remember. Really? Zero percent chance. <laughs> I was actually thinking about it as well. I was thinking, what are the percent I actually, chances? I do remember. See, I was. I gave you thirty percent chance. I thought you might remember it. Thirty percent. Thirty percent. Wow. I mean, in theory, that that's a it's a lot of faith. So. It's called the Shamash. Does that ring a bell? 
the the, Did the, I just the, <laughs> just the, that the real trick is or the the real Did I sound very confident the, in that? Not fully. And if you did make it up, I would have no way of fully verifying. I mean, you would. In theory, yes, but I'm not going to go rushing to the interwebs to do so. So you just trust me. It doesn't sound it like sounds, I should. It, it sounds from, pretty from good, your, right? From your, you know, leading on. So it it is called a shamash, and actually, do you know what that means, more importantly? Soul survivor. Le- hold, light holder. No. Light sparker. It's called, uh, so it means the helper. Was close. Yeah, the you sparker. You were close. Basically the same thing. Tomato, tomato. You got it. So now I'm just filling in these white pieces with actual white paint. So I'm covering up the canvas with the white paint and you can't really see what I'm doing because it's white on white, but this is where I actually get to define what these um, candle holders look like and the shapes of them. So if for some reason mine is too thin, I could add more white to it and just make this line thicker. And if for some reason I went in with the white and I made it too big or like a weird shape, you could always go back in with the blue and cover up some of the white. So feel free to keep going back and forth until you get the shape that you want. And actually, um, so my menorah is round shaped, but there's so many cool looking ones that are more of like triangular shaped or even straight. So definitely feel free to play around and just be as creative as you want. So I'm just filling in these shapes. And going back and forth with these colors just to get the shape that I want. And it's okay if some of the blue goes into the white or the white goes into the blue and the colors mesh a little bit, it's totally fine. So just leave it, let it go, and we'll add more color to it later. I'm just defining some of these lines a little bit more. And then you could go in with your blue color. So I'll show you guys how to do that. So you could go in with blue and just cover up some of this white shape. But don't focus on perfecting the shape of it too much because this original painting is pretty messy and a lot of the lines kind of mesh together and some of the colors combine and some of the shapes are not as defined. So just have fun with it and kind of be more freestyle. I don't know why I just waved my hands around like I was a free conducting, the, conducting the a class. The spirit was running through you. And we could always add more blue later on as we're adding more and more colors to the menorah. So this is actually the fun part where you get to add the colors that you want to your menorah. So I'm going to start with yellow, but feel free to decide in the beginning kind of what color scheme you want. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Um, you don't have to make it these specific colors. You could pick whatever colors you want. And I'm actually... Super excited to see what you'll be able to create. And how can they show you? And how can they show me? So um, we actually ask all of our um, followers and customers to tag their paintings with hashtag creatively box. It's actually at the bottom of the screen. Um, so you can post it on 
Facebook or Instagram, tag us and we'll be able to see it and share it on our own page. And also we just love seeing your work and how different everyone's is. That's my favorite. That's honestly the best part. Like you give a set of instructions, but then the interpretation and the unique. The interpretation is the best. All right, guys, so I'm going to take some yellow and I'm going to start adding it in random places of my menorah. So I want to make sure that I'm leaving some of the spots uh, white so that way I have room to add other colors. So I'm going to start only with a little bit of yellow and then later on I could add more and more. So I'll just, I'll just see what happens. So I'm just going to go in here and... Add some to the left side of the center candle. And I'm using pretty thick paint. It's kind of creating a cool texture on my canvas, so I'm not afraid to use a lot of the paint. And just playing around with texture a bit. And then I'm gonna add it to the bottom over here. I'm actually gonna add it to the bottom of all of these candle holders. And if I get a little bit outside of the lines, it actually comes out looking really cool. So I encourage you guys to do that as well. And you could go right into the blue color. So I'm just adding some yellow right now and I'm leaving these spaces white so that way I have room for other colors. So it's hard to know when to stop using one color. So you could always um, use a little bit of it. And then when you're putting other colors on, you'll be able to decide, okay, do I want more yellow or do I want more of the other colors? So you kind of don't really know until the very end. And then you could just play around with taking colors away or adding more colors, if that makes any sense. Does that make sense? It does. And you can also kind of go back and... Paint over if you, you exactly know, like an older color that you use. You're like, oh, let's put some, some of that bad boy back in there. Exactly, and this is what I love about acrylic paint is you can never make mistakes because as soon as the paint is dry, you could just paint right over it and just cover up the entire canvas. And this is, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but this actual canvas I covered up with white paint and I painted right over it. No. Yes. Stop it. <laughs> I don't think I can so be there anymore. So there's, there's no mistakes that can be made. So I'm going to wash my brush, and I'm going to create one of my favorite colors, a turquoise. Do you, do you know how to do that one, Alex? Blue and green. Yes. But the way that... I do it with these colors is actually just white and the phthalo green. And that makes an amazing turquoise color and I'll show you. So if you guys got the kit, um, you got the phthalo green, which is a very dark bluish green color. And all you need to do is add white to it and it just comes out so beautiful. So this is the color that you get. So in okay. theory, I wasn't wrong, per se. No, because the phthalo Just, green you know, already has blue in it. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is the color that I'm going to use next, but feel free to play around with your colors, and you could always add yellow to it to see what happens. It's just going to be a little bit more green. Um, you could go in with a completely different color, like orange. So we're going to be doing turquoise right now, um, and I'm just going to go... 
in random parts of my menorah and kind of drag the color down and some of it is going right into the yellow and they're kind of mixing together which is okay you're too symmetrical you gotta let the you gotta let the free spirit run wild you are absolutely right alex i'm intrigued what various colors our lovely audience will do so then i'm gonna mix some pink by adding red and white. So I'm going to be mixing it together and then I'm going to add some pink parts to my menorah um, in the spaces that I have that are empty. Oh, that's a little too red. So I'm just going to add some white to it just to lighten it up a bit. A little too red for your liking, huh? So I'm adding some pink into the middle candle and then going up the other candle holders and just dropping the color into random places. So I'm trying not to be too symmetrical with my menorah. I'm trying to add the color into places that are a bit random so otherwise it just looks too stiff and you want to make sure that you're adding a lot of movement to it and just remember if you added a pink color in a place that you don't like you could always take it away by adding another color on top of it so just play around with your colors add take away colors Add some more, build up the texture a bit, and just, just have fun with it. So I'm actually not blending the colors together. Um, I'm just dropping down a stroke of paint and leaving it there. And it's kind of hard to do because you want to just blend out the colors, but it actually comes out better when you just put the stroke down and just leave it and then add another one right next to it without blending the two colors together. Otherwise, it might look a little bit muddy. So now I'm mixing up some of the blue color for my background and I could add some of this blue to define my menorah shape a bit. So I'm mixing the white and blue again and then I'm adding some of this blue to certain areas that I want more defined. So this is the part where you get to actually shape your menorah a bit more if you want to if some of the candle holders are too close together you could add more blue in between just to create more space between them
So then I'm gonna take some white and I'm gonna add some highlights. So I'm just adding a little bit, um, mostly to the top of my uh, candle holders. And it's really gonna make this shape pop. So just keep playing around with the colors, guys. Just add more of the pink, more of the yellow, more of the turquoise, and just continue building up some of the colors. So I'm making my paints pretty thick um, and kind of building up the texture a bit. And when you look at it up close, you could see all of the different strokes of paint. But when you look at it from far away, it actually all pretty much comes together. So then I'm gonna wash my brush completely. And I'm gonna take a big chunk of white paint. And then I'm just gonna go in short fast strokes in different directions with my white, covering up the top of my canvas. So it's kind of hard to see it on the canvas, but it's, it's there. So I'm just going in different directions and just covering up the top part of my canvas. And I'm taking the white right into my blue color because I want them to mix a little bit. And because my blue color is a bit dry right now, um, I could see that my color's not mixing that well, so I could always go back in with the blue and just add some fresh paint on top of the white. And then I could go back in with the white and blend those two colors together. So just make sure when you're blending, this is probably the only time we'll get to blend in this painting, make sure that your colors are both wet. So I'm just bringing back this blue color right here. And then going right into the white. So you could add a little bit more water because you want the colors or the paint to be pretty wet for this step. And then you could take a big blob of white and go back into the blue with the white and then these colors will blend together. And then I'm gonna add some blue to the sides, to the top here. And blend that out into the white. So just make sure, again, that both of your colors are wet. So my blue right now is pretty wet and I'm gonna add white on top of it and blend those colors together. You guys are doing great. I feel like a lot of people are intimidated by blending, but once they try it, it's actually pretty easy and fun. So I do want this area to be pretty light because we're gonna be adding um, the candles here. 
So I want to make sure to take away most of the blue and kind of keep this area as white as possible. So I'm going to keep on adding more and more white to cover up some of my blue. So now I'm going to add some short strokes of yellow, pink, and white onto the top of my canvas over here. I'm gonna start with yellow, and I'm just gonna go right over the white using the same kind of technique. It's getting really messy. Really dabbing it in there, huh? Really dabbing in there. Just very quickly. And then maybe I'll go in with some more white right over this yellow. Maybe I'll cover some of it up. And I'm creating a, a pretty cool texture. So my paint is pretty thick right now. And then I'm going to go in with pink. So I'm going to mix some white and some red to make pink. Are we going for the same type of pink as before? Yeah, it's, it's pretty similar. And I'm just going in here and adding some pink. And it's all about these layers. So I'm just adding one layer on top of the other, on top of the other. Like a what? An onion. Like an onion? I thought you said something totally different. I'm not going to repeat. Like an ogre? That's what I thought you said. A little Shrek reference for you? And then maybe I'll go in more with some white. And maybe I'm going to blend in some of this blue background into the edges over here. So I'm going to go back in with the medium blue. And I could go right into this color and just blend it in a little bit. It's almost going to turn a little green, but then I could go over it with white. which I think I'm going to do. So 
So I know I said no blending, but I'm blending the sides in just a little bit. Rules were made for bending. I see. I see. So I think I want to move on to my candles. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> so the candles are going to be in, let's see, one, two, three, four steps. So we're going to start with the base layer. So just remember that this is only the first layer, so it's not going to look like a fully formed candle yet. But once we get to our fourth step, it's all going to come together. So just have a little patience and it's all going to come together in the end. It always does. So I'm going to take some orange. Red and yellow. And I'm going to start creating these uh, teardrop shapes or as Alex call them raindrops. You call them raindrops, right? I think that's a better name. I'll stick to raindrops. So I'm going to do a circle at the bottom and then just raise it up and just get thinner at the top. So super easy shape, raindrop, teardrop, whatever you want to call it. You could also make them slightly different just because when they're blowing in the wind, they're all going kind of in different directions. They might be slightly different sizes. So definitely vary it up and it's going to give it some movement as well. So I'm just doing this base layer of orange. So rounded shape at the bottom and then take your stroke up a bit and thin it out at the top. This one in the center could maybe be a little bit bigger if you want, or maybe a little bit higher. They're all moving in slightly different directions. So now I'm going to take a little bit of my blue color and I'm going to define the shape just a little bit. So I'm using my small brush. I'm going to clean it just a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. And then I'm going to take my blue color and I'm just going to go over some of this shape. So I'm not going over the entire shape, just maybe the bottom and kind of taking it up just a little bit. And then the same thing with these other ones. So it gives it a little bit more definition. And they don't all need to be the same. So some of this blue outline is maybe going on the other side of the candle, some of it is going maybe to the top.
But most of this blue is probably going to stay at the bottom of the candle, right? I'd say so. The hottest part? Probably makes most. I'm just adding just a thin outline, mostly to the bottom of the candles. So it's sort of starting to come together, but we still have two more steps. Halfway there. Halfway there, that's right. Halfway there. Let's do it. I'm just going to wash my brush. And then I'm going to take some yellow. I'm taking a pretty big chunk of yellow and I'm going to put it in the center of each candle. I'm going to layer it pretty thickly in the middle. Thickly, is that a word, Alex? I'm going to need a, a dictionary check on that. <laughs> uh, judges. The will let it pass today. But I, I need to know the answer. I, I'm pretty sure. It's a fluid situation. I'm pretty sure I'll take it. Today, we, we can pretend it's a word. So I'm putting a big blob of yellow into the middle of these candles just to brighten them up a bit. And also feel free to add maybe some red to the outer edges of your teardrop, raindrop, whatever you want to call it. So it gives it even more dimension. And you guys can see I'm going to hold this up a bit. The yellow has a lot of texture in it. So don't be afraid to just pick up a lot of paint and just put it down on your canvas. And just let it stay there. So if you want, you could always add just a little bit of red into it or pink. So I'm going to mix a little bit of pink, maybe making it a little bit darker. This is a bonus step, totally optional. And I'm going to add maybe a little bit of red as a highlight on the side of these candles. So just a, one or two strokes for each of these candles, just on the bottom or on the side. And this is already looking pretty cool. And then for the last step, Alex, you ready? I was going to ask if it was uh, too on the nose to say we're getting warmer. <laughs> I'm going to add a small white stroke on the top uh, side of the candle. So also you can make your white stroke pretty thick because you don't really want it to blend in with the color. You want it to show up. So I'm just going to drop it in here on the side. And it doesn't need to be in the same place. It could be slightly different on each candle. And it gives it a bit of dimension.
but I think I made this one a little bit too big so I could always go back in with the yellow and just remove it very easily. So I think that was almost the last step of the entire painting. So the last step is going to be to sign your name was, at the bottom. I was going to say, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold last, on a last second. Last step. We have to put our own marking on it. We do. So just pick a place on your canvas where you want your signature to be. Usually I place mine at the bottom of the canvas, the bottom right. Um, but definitely totally up to you. So thank you guys so much for joining. Please share what you created on social media, on either Facebook or Instagram, and use hashtag creativelybox for a chance to be featured. And check out our website, creativelybox.com, also at the bottom of the screen, for awesome gifts, um, paint subscriptions, and uh, paint kits as well. And please join us for our next tutorial. Can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye.